So, the mother came and asked, she looked at the king and she said, Oh, great king, one last time I ask you, are you really sure that I can take anything I see in this palace? So the king hugged the grandma and kissed her and said, Mother, whatever, I swear on my oath of my name, whatever. As soon as she heard that, she grabbed the king. She grabbed the king and she said, I am taking you as my son home. Everybody was shocked in the palace, you know. Even the king was shocked. He said, why mother, don't you want anything? She said, if I take anything from your palace, it will only last a couple of days. But if I take you, I'm taking the whole palace with me. In the same way, don't just ask for this or that. Ask for God himself. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. So instead of all these things that can be easily added to us, why are we like beggars asking Lord, give me this, give me that. Quit praying for all that. Remember the story of what I just told you. Grab the king. Amen. Grab the king and you'll have everything that the king owns. Amen. So Solomon was like that. He did not ask for any material things. He asked for wisdom. As a result, God blessed him more than what Solomon asked. See, that's a good scriptural example for you. The Lord bless him not only with wisdom, but also with riches, with honor, so that he was the top of the whole world. Now, such a wise man, you would never imagine will ever do any wrong. But the Bible says, very sadly, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 8. Now, let me read that. If you have your Bible, you can follow me with that. Now, King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabites, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Ketite women. Now, all these nations worship heathen gods. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. So this is a command God has given to the nation of Israel. King Solomon knew all that. Knowing all that, he clung to the love of this woman. He had 700 wives. Surely his name is in Guinea's Book of Records. <laughs> 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines. That's 1,000 of them. And his wives now, even if the first part is forgivable, but don't say, I gave you the license to go and have as many wives as you can. I didn't mean that. Then, the sad part is this. And his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not wholly follow the Lord as David his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. Which means he had set up 1,000 altars or temples 
to all these gods all over Israel. How sad. Now, what was the consequence of this? In 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11 says, The anger and the judgment of God came upon Solomon, and God told him, I will now tear Israel into two. The kingdom will be torn into. Till then, Israel was one. All the 12 tribes were one. But at that time, the kingdom was torn and God tore ten tribes away from Solomon and gave it to another man. And only one was with him. And that one was with him, not because of Solomon, was because of King David, for his father's sake. That's consequence number one. The second consequence was, God raised up adversaries against Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 14 to 39, adversaries from all around him came against Solomon and against Israel for war. Now the amazing thing was, before that, when he walked right before God, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 4, he had peace all around his borders. Even his enemies were at peace with him. There was no adversary, no wars. The whole land rested in peace. But as soon as the hand of God was removed from Solomon, his once upon a time enemies who were put or kept at bay now turned against him. Perhaps in your own personal life, you may have also experienced something like this. Why is it that you are experiencing wars or things are going wrong in your life? Once upon a time they were good, now it seems that everything is turning topsy-turvy over your life. Now you want to check your heart and see if you have done anything or something like what Solomon has done. Now the third example which is very familiar to all of you, is the example of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 13 verse 13, that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked sinners before God. Even before they were judged, right from the beginning, they were extremely wicked before the Lord God. How wicked were they wicked? Now, most of us always thought that they were, their wickedness or their sin was only the sins of sodomy. But if you read Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 to 50, it gives us a, bit, a little bit more information concerning their larger wickedness. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride. Number one, excess of food and prosperous ease, but did not eat the poor and the needy. They were haughty and did abomination before me. Five great wickedness that they had done, more than sodomy. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. You know, the entire nation of Sodom and Gomorrah, the twin cities, were so lustful. Even the young and the old were fornicating. You know, if you read Genesis chapter 19 verse 4, it says that when two angels came to the home of Lord, everybody in the city gathered at the door of Lord to fornicate with the angels. Now, I'm sure the angels did not come there with wings on their behind their shoulder. Most of the angels appear like men. That's why you, you sometimes cannot tell the difference whether it's an angel or a man unless and until they do something supernatural before your eyes. 
Only then you will know that they were angels who have come in the form of a man. And the Bible says the young and the old were gathered there. And the Hebrew word for young meant little children, really small kids. Even the small ones were fornicating. You know, if our children are going to grow up in a city where you're going to be bombarded from kindergarten right up to high school, that a gay lifestyle is okay, what is a little kid going to grow up with? What kind of thoughts? It's okay, right? It's okay for a man to kiss a man. It's okay for a man to sleep with another man. There are symbols of gay men and lesbian women. Have you seen that? If not, don't take out your smartphone right now to check. Don't do it right now. Do it when you're going home. Not only a gay man, a gay couple and a lesbian couple, but also gay and lesbian couples with children. There are those emojis, emoticons like that. So which means it is an becoming an acceptable lifestyle. Even conservative nations like India, China, and many Asian countries are now on the verge of openly embracing the gay community. You know, this is what the Lord Jesus himself said, that in the last days, they will be like the days of Lot. And the days of Lot are the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they are right at our doorsteps. So as a result, the consequence of that was fire came down from God and totally destroyed not only Sodom and Gomorrah, but five cities around Sodom and Gomorrah. So a total of seven cities were totally destroyed to ashes because of a gay lifestyle and wicked sins done by them. Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 to 26. Now we have seen three examples from the Bible. The consequences of a nation turning to lust. So how does all this apply to the United Kingdom? So now let's now focus on the United Kingdom. You have this problem, don't you? There is a lust problem in this country. Now, what is the last problem in the United Kingdom? Same-sex marriage bill was legalized by the England Parliament in July 2013. And in March 13, 2014, it came to be enacted as a law and the first gay marriage was conducted on March the 29th in 2014. And same-sex marriage bill was legalized in Scotland by Parliament in February 2014. And it came to be enforced on December 16, 2014. And the first gay marriage in Scotland between a gay couple was conducted on December the 31st, 2014. So this being the case, what is going to happen now? There is a consequence, isn't it? We have seen through scriptures. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything shall be established. Now we have seen three biblical examples. So what is going to be the consequence for the United Kingdom? This is the word that the Lord gave me. God will chastise this nation to cleanse her, to refine her, to purify her before drawing her to himself. You will be cleansed. You will be purified. You know, God has not forgotten the old covenant he has made with this nation. There are many, many godly fathers who rose up in this country 300 years ago and they made godly covenants with God 
We do not know what they are, but God knows what they are. And God is a covenant-keeping God. He remembers His covenant. He doesn't forget His covenant. Even though you walk far away from God, He remembers His covenant. So He will do this. But before He do this, how will He chastise you? Let's look at the scripture for an example. Exodus, I mean, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 15 to 38. Now I encourage you to read this whole portion of scripture and you'll find there written for a simple how you may be chastised either exactly like that or quite similar to that. After the chastisement, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 16 to 62. Now let's read the scriptures. After the chastisement, what's next? Next is restoration. God drawing the nation to himself so that your end time destiny will be completed. Maybe you didn't listen to me carefully. I did not say your end time destiny will be fulfilled. I say your end time destiny will be completed. Which means what your forefathers started hundreds of years ago. They started it but did not finish it. And in your these last days, you are going to complete it. Amen. It's going to be completed. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 60 to 62. Yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth. I will establish for you an everlasting covenant. Now look at the scripture where it says the days of your youth. That was what the Lord showed me. The days of your youth, meaning the covenant that God established with your forefathers hundreds of years ago. They made a covenant with God. So he remembers that covenant. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you take your sisters, both your elder and your younger, and I will give them to you as daughter shame. When you take your sisters, both your elder and your younger, and I will give them to you as daughters, but not on account of the covenant with you, I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yes. These are the good things that God wants to do in you. But before that, we must be chastised. Are you willing? Yes. But it will be painful. But it will do you eternal good. Amen. You know the Bible tells us very clearly in Hebrews chapter 12, no chastisement is pleasant. But it will do an eternal good in us. You know when I was growing up, I was beaten by my father for no rhyme or reason. You know sometimes there were some reasons most of the time, there were no reasons. After when I was beaten, blue, black all over my body with blood, you know, coming out, I'll be sitting in one, one corner in the midst of my tears and crying. I'll be wondering, why did, why was I beaten? No reason. So, I always resented that. And I grew up resenting that. But I was often beaten. Sometimes for things that I've done then it's fair, you know. But many times, I do not know why. Till today, I do not know why. But, when I grew a little older, when I look back, I realized they were all for good. They were all for good, even though I don't understand till today. Because I could not go and ask my father. He's no longer alive to ask him, why did you do all that? But, Look back, 
I realized it was for good. Amen. In the same manner, the chastisement of the Lord. You know, the scripture says, our earthly fathers chastise us for their good. But our heavenly father chastises us for our own good. So that you will be transformed like your father in heaven. Perfect in all your ways. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand up for a word of prayer. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. In all his power, for a moment now, we heard what just tonight. heard. Say, Lord, we are sorry. We are sorry that we've let you down. We are sorry, Lord, that we've not fulfilled our role as your church. We have not been a light in the darkness. Say, Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us as your people, as a church. Have mercy upon us as a nation for not giving ourselves to the fulfillment of our destiny. We're sorry for lusting after evil. We're sorry for giving ourselves over to that which is inconvenient. We're sorry for giving ourselves over. Lord, have mercy upon us. Come on, lift up your voice tonight and cry to the Lord. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to heal our land. Say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We are sorry for giving ourselves over to darkness, for giving ourselves over to evil lusts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us tonight, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us, Lord. Heal our land. We need your healing in our land, Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, forgive our sin and heal our land. Forgive our sin, Lord, and heal our land. Heal our hearts, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. For forgetting you. Lord, for, for, for forsaking the God of Israel. For forsaking you, the fountain of living waters. For hewing for ourselves broken fountains that can hold no water. Lord, have mercy upon us. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord. The Lord wants to pour his healing salt into the streams of this nation. The evil waters, the bitter waters, the Lord wants to make them sweet again. Let's cry unto the Lord for his healing salt to come upon this nation. The same way Elisha took salt and he poured into the streams and Jericho was healed let's cry to the Lord that Lord release your healing salt upon this nation 
your healing salt, Lord, that the fountain of living waters may flow once again, that this nation will no longer export evil to the other nations of the world, but will fulfill our destiny to export the gospel, to export prophets, to export the counsel of God to other nations. Let's ask for the healing salt of the Lord to come upon this land. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. This nation has been called to be like a forerunner. It is our destiny to be a forerunner. It is this nation that the Lord committed the English language, the English Bible, that spread to so many nations. And the devil has seen that. And that is why he sought to fill this nation with evil, so that that evil can be transported to other nations of the world because it is our destiny to be a forerunner nation. But the devil has been corrupting it. But we are going to decree tonight that enough is enough. We are going to ask the devil to take his hands off this nation. That the United Kingdom will rise from the ashes, will rise from the dust to fulfill her prophetic destiny. Come and open your mouth and decree like that. Open your mouth and pray. Command that the hands of the evil one be taken off. That the dust will be shaken off. And command that this nation will arise. Will arise. Will arise. Will arise. And fulfill her destiny. Will export the end time message. Will export prophets, missionaries, apostles, teachers, pastors to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth, that once again the womb of this nation will give birth to prophets, to pastors, to teachers, to evangelists, to missionaries that will arise and will go to the uttermost ends of the earth. Come and open your mouth and decree like that. Open your mouth and decree like that. The Lord is putting his anointing upon your lips. What you decree right now will be established. What you decree right now will be written as a memorial. What you decree right now will come to pass. Oh, thank you, Lord. Rikaba haba baba randa laba rikaba haba shmeve. Ripre kendo sore ba haba shenda riba kaba ba hinda liba haba be. Ne haba hande ripre kendo josa habi terretoze. Riprekendo robo se riba haba haba baba yanda riprekendo skel Riprekendo ruba haba shindelini endre sontrelie Rikle reto jiba haba zita riba haba te Oh riba haba shkende ribe dos Command the United Kingdom to arise from the dust To shake off the dust Ni kaba kaba shinda riba kaba kandes kende rebe kande jote ruba kaba ba.